Welcome to Throwback Thursdays with Colby from Nothing Yet Studios. Um, I figured for this year, this uh, week's Throwback Thursday, we would visit Dawn of War Soulstorm. Uh, this is a fantastic um, real-time strategy game. I, I've always enjoyed it a lot. It's really cool to do something in the Warhammer 40k universe, but this one was just fantastic. I wasn't as big of a fan of Dawn of War 2 as I am of Dawn of War 1. The campaign in this um, just is a lot more fun. It feels more real-time strategy-ish. Um, it kind of almost Total War-ish in some ways. Um, not in all the ways, obviously. But, um, but I just wanted to, uh, to show you guys this game. Um, September the 20th was the 10-year anniversary of Dawn of War. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this game, and I'll play a little bit for you. We'll start a campaign so you can see how that works. But um, if you've never heard of Dawn, of, uh, not Dawn, sorry, Warhammer 40K, if you've never heard of Warhammer 40K, you need to go to gamesworkshop.com or Wikipedia. They have a lot of information on there as well. I wouldn't say all of it's perfectly accurate, but most of it probably is. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go into the campaign here, and I'll kind of explain what starting a new campaign looks like on this game. Uh, my computer is having a little bit of problems. If you notice, uh, my game's skipping a little bit and sometimes just freezing up for no apparent reason. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what's going on. I, I virus scanned my computer. I deleted about 85 gigabytes and then defragmented my computer's hard drive. And it's still going pretty slow. So um, you hit up that uh, little donate button at the bottom uh, um, for my PayPal, or for the PayPal for the company actually. And we'll, uh, you know, once we get some donations and some money rolling our way, the first thing we're going to be doing is investing in better equipment, better computers, better sound, um, better um, capture uh, programs, uh, the software, everything. We're going to be trying to get a little bit of everything and make it better so that the videos that we can make for you guys are the best. Uh, also, uh, stay tuned with our channel for Twitch updates. We will actually be putting out a schedule for Twitch. We will have a Twitch account. If you guys want to see us while we're recording, um, check us out on Twitch. So... Um, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to record and play on Twitch. At least not all of us. A couple of the guys have MacBook Pros, so they probably can uh, do all of that. But my computer is definitely not going to let me do all that right now. Hopefully, they'll all have a new computer soon. It's one of the things I'm saving up for personally. Anyway, um, as far as this game is concerned, we're going to go to normal. Because I haven't played in a little while. But we're going to skip the cin cinematics. Cinematics in the story is pretty cool. So... You can probably look up just the cinematics on YouTube. They might have a video somewhere. But um, in the Soulstorm campaign, which is a little different than the other ones, you get to choose whatever faction you want to use. Now, the way that this game is set up to function is you have to buy Dawn of War, and then there's three expansion packs that you can buy. They're optional. You have Winter Assault, Soulstorm, and Dark... Dark something. Um, the, the the actual the second expansion is uh, Dark something or another. Um, actually, hold on just a second and let me go. I'm gonna pause real quick and I'm gonna go grab the book. All right, I'm back. Uh, that's a uh, Dark Crusade. Dark Crusade is the second expansion that came out. Soulstorm is the third. Um, each expansion brought with it new races. I believe in the first game you started with. I want to say you started with Imperial Guard, Space Marines, Orcs, and Chaos Space Marines, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then Winter Assault added in some other stuff, and you end up with like Eldar. Um, but the. Um, Dark Crusade added in the Tau and the Necrons, which are two really cool races. Dark Crusade, in my opinion, is probably the better expansion. If you like playing with these two, they're a lot of fun. 
Um, they're very good ranged. They have some good close combat melee units, but they're really good ranged and they're very unique. And then Soulstorm came out, and I believe in Soulstorm you get the Dark Eldar and the Sisters of Battle. I've heard the Sisters of Battle are the best in the game, but I don't know for sure. Now that they're doing updates, they'll probably be balancing the game more. So, um, but the way that it works is as you buy each expansion, you get each race for multiplayer. But you always have them, I believe, for the campaign. Because as of right now, I can play as Tau and Necrons, and I do not have the Dark Crusade expansion installed. I own it, but whenever Steam added it to their library, which is another cool feature since now it's on Steam, um, the product codes for Dark Crusader don't match the one that I have on my book. So I'm actually working with Steam right now to try and get that resolved. But it's a really cool system because, like I said, you know, with Soulstorm installed, I can play with all of the different creatures, but I believe it's when you go to online multiplayer that you're limited by what your actual um, installations give you. So right now, I think if I went to multiplayer, I could not play as the Tau or the Necrons. So for this game and campaign... I don't know what I want to choose. Um, the Dark Eldar are pretty, uh, they're pretty nasty guys. Uh, they're all like masochists and stuff like that. They're uh, it's just really weird. I'm not big into them. And then you also have the Dark, or the Chaos Space Marines. These guys are pretty, uh, they're pretty dark too, but they're not dark in the same way the Dark Eldar are. These guys are um, they're worshippers of the Chaos Gods. While there is Slanesh as a Chaos God, there's also three other ones, and they're just kind of, you know, your typical bad guys. Um, they're all for the Chaos Gods, and they worship them. The Eldar are an ancient race that use um, a special type of technology that's kind of infused with a magic style thing, um, I guess. I'm, I'm not an expert at the Warhammer 40k stuff, I haven't really played a lot. I played Warhammer 40k a little bit. I'm a, I'm a big Warhammer Fantasy guy. I have several armies for that. But Warhammer 40k, I've only owned two armies. and you know, It just never really did it for me. It wasn't a game that I really enjoyed. But the Eldar, from what I read, they're very very old, ancient race. And they see it their duty to try and protect the universe from um, unspeakable ancient atrocities like the Necrons, which is why they're even in this Kaurava system, which is the system you play this campaign in. They're here because the Necrons were were awakened by some warp storm, stone, uh, storm, warp storm, and so they came through and uh, started taking uh, setting up shop so they could wipe out everybody else in the galaxy. Um, to keep the Necron from waking back up completely and enslaving the entire universe. The Imperial Guard are... They are Imperial Guard. They have flashlight guns. Um, if you're a Warhammer 40k player and you're not an IG player, you'll find that funny. If you're an IG player, you might be a little butt hurt. But uh, the Imperial Guard infantry, for the most part, is kind of useless unless it's in great numbers or you pay a lot of points for them in the game. That's what the guys at our shop tells us. Um... Anybody that I see play an IG, they usually play lots of tanks and basilisks. But um, anyway, these guys, they're just like your... Uh, if you've ever seen the movie... Um, oh, what is that movie with the Space Marines and the Bugs? Um, I think it might be called Space Marines. I, I, I can't really remember, but it's, it's that movie it's got the bugs and it's got the space marines and everything like that there was a game for the 64 called like armorines or something like that um it was based off that universe these guys are those soldiers as a matter of fact they look so much like the soldiers in the first movie that it'll just absolutely blow your mind these basic guardsmen they die by the droves they're just flesh shields is what they are um so if you play as the imperial guard who has a base there um you're going to be focusing on trying to get like Bane Blades and big tanks on the field because your regular infantry really aren't that great. Necrons have a cool mechanic um, where, well, all of the different races actually have their own unique mechanics for population limits and, and, and gathering resources and everything. Um, with the Necrons, you don't have to have... Um, you don't have to have one type of resource. I believe you only have to have power, which helps you out a good bit. But uh, 
but there are problems. Uh, they're they're really kind of slow to accrue power, and their stuff's very expensive. Um, but that makes you, that makes you not have to focus on both types of resources, as well as um, I believe that they gain population limit just by building buildings, kind of like the Tau, um, who do something similar. Then you have uh, the orcs, which you know they have the wog, a wog, um, as it says right here is like uh, it's like an orc jihad that's like the best way to explain it um, they just they go on a wog and, and you're trying to get your wog up you need wog as well as the other two resources to be able to build more elite units to rally them to your banner and stuff like that I don't know really anything about the sisters of battle actually I don't know anything about the dark Eldar either because I never play with them I do not enjoy playing sisters of battle um, one of my very good friends that used to play this game with me, he loved Sisters of Battle, and he played them all the time. I, I've never really touched them. Then the uh, Space Marines are Space Marines. They're boss. They're, they're, it's like a bunch of Master Chiefs. They have this armor on that um, is, like, enhancing their bodies, and, you know, they have, like, all these really cool bionic implants and stuff. Um, and so... They're really cool. They're they're the quote unquote good guys in the universe. Uh, they're the servants of the emperor, and you know the sisters of battle are too, and so are the imperial guard. These are all you know your humans. Everybody else is what they call xenos, which is uh, aliens. Uh, the Tau Empire is um, they're really cool. They're all about unity and what's best for everyone and stuff like that. They're really a really um, socialistic type government. But they're really cool because um, they're very good ranged combat. Their ranged combat's sick. Once you get all your guys completely upgraded, whenever someone starts charging you with a big fully decked out infantry, they'll probably die before they even get close to you. So the tower are really good for that, and their technology is really awesome. So um, those are all of our different um, people that we can play as. I typically don't play as either of the Eldar or the Sisters of Battle. I don't like the way the Eldar play, and I don't like the Sisters of Battle. So, um, we can go with any of the other ones right now, just because, I mean, I want to enjoy this game as I play. Um, and this will be a several-part series. I'll, I'll be dropping several videos over the next month or two just for this game alone. Um, it'll be introduced on a Thursday, and I might stick to releasing this uh, my other videos on Thursdays specifically. However, um, after its initial launch and talking about the game, I might actually start just releasing these midweek. I don't know. I'll let you guys know whenever I post. It'll be in the description um, on what I decide to do with that. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and select our guy and get to taking over this system of planets. Hmm. I think that I want to play as... You know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the Tau. I was talking about how awesome their ranged units are, and we're going to show you that. Alright, we'll do a little bit of overview of the map and kind of how this works, and then I think we're going to conclude our first video in this series, and we'll get into the real meat combat next to video. Um, that way you guys will be hanging on a thread, waiting, excited and everything. Alright, so um, the Tau start with one, they jumped in, took a moon, and then they put their base on it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because nobody really cares. So let's go recon our own base and go to the reinforce menu so we can look at it. Alright, you have the opportunity to go ahead and garrison people into your base. It costs, you can garrison buildings as well, but it costs per building and you have a limit to how many bu buildings and how many units you put in there. But you can like beef up your base to where... As soon as the game starts, you can almost just walk across the map and blow them up. Because um, because be between your garrison here, your normal garrison, 
um, and your honor guard and your fully leveled up commander, it can be almost impossible for people to take bases from you. Unless when they attack, they have a huge honor guard as well. Um, so the strength of this base is a 10 because it's a home a home base. Home bases are, are much harder to take than just little territories. And it gives me a requisition bonus of plus 100 um, per turn. This is turn based. We also have a cannon. This cannon will weaken the... Uh, when we go to assault a territory, it'll jump through and weaken the guys. So we'll go ahead and accept that. It'll weaken whoever we attack. Um, because we have here, it shows us the two places we can attack. We can either get a webway portal, which will allow us to jump down here, or jump over here. And we can also get the rock claw foothills, which will give us a fire warrior bodyguard, which is an honor guard unit. They're a little expensive, but they're incredibly powerful. Again, if you see any kind of like glitchiness going on on my screen or any kind of lag, I apologize profusely and I really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe, get us those views we need, and also if you guys could maybe go to our PayPal page and maybe give us a small donation and a shout out, you'll get a special thanks by whatever name it is you put in the message or the note on that donation from us personally thanking you. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and conclude as of right now, and I will see you guys next time we play. Thank you so much for watching, and have an absolutely wonderful night.